Hi, welcome to Church on the Go. My name's Sammy, and I'll be your host. Church on the Go is a ministry of Messiah Church, offering scripture, a message, and music all in about 30 minutes. We know that you're busy, probably still recovering from a great holiday season, and we wanted something that you could take with you on the go, but still dive into scripture and reflect and enjoy some worship music. Today we're starting a new sermon series called Wrestling with Doubt, Finding Faith. You know, everyone has doubts, like where is God when bad things happen? Does God hear our prayers? Does God really love me? Is there a heaven? But questions and doubt are not the enemy of faith. They are a path to deeper faith. So I hope you'll join us over the next few weeks as we wrestle with faith together. Today, Pastor Bethany is bringing us a message called Doubt and the Existence of God. We're looking at the book of Psalms and the Gospel of Mark. You know, having faith does not mean we don't have doubt. We all have doubts. And that's okay, because doubt can lead to a deeper faith. I hope that this time is enriching and that you stick around after the message for a great song from our worship team. Welcome, listener, to another episode of Church on the Go. I'm Pastor Bethany Nelson, and I am grateful that you are joining me today for worship. In the Gospel of Mark, there's a story about a father who meets Jesus in pure desperation. Since birth, his son has been unwell, and Scripture describes the boy's illness as what we might recognize as seizures that overwhelm his whole body. Nothing the father does is helping, and his parent is desperate. The father meets Jesus and pleads with him, saying, If you can do anything, help him. I can feel this parental love and helplessness in the Father's words. There's no amount of doctoring or prayers that seem to be any use. We don't know how old the boy is, but I imagine that his parents have had countless days of worry, hours of prayers, searching for a way to bring healing to their boy. And now the Father meets Jesus and pleads with him for help. Now, there was a time when one of my boys was a toddler that for more than a year, his body was covered with eczema, dry and bumpy skin that caused him to not only be uncomfortable, but also frequently sick. His body was so busy fighting for his skin to heal that it didn't seem to have much left to fight off just the normal toddler germs. We tried everything, lotions and creams, special baths, medicine, nothing seemed to help. Now, none of this was life-threatening, but it was pretty disruptive to our lives and to my son's overall health and happiness. We saw experts. We saw uh, people in alternative medicines, and we were at our wits' ends. If I had met Jesus then, I would have pleaded the same, if you can do anything, help him. Finally, we found a resolution, but this gave me a glimpse into the pain and fear and worry that this father and so many other parents must have felt that day with a child who has chronic illness, a growing desperation, and with it a growing sense of doubt or unbelieving that a solution could be found. Jesus told the father that day to have faith. He said, all things are possible with faith. Now, according to the book of Hebrews in chapter 11, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And so Jesus is inviting the Father to hope and to trust, even in what seems impossible. The Father responds, I believe, help my unbelief. This is a simple and profound prayer that even while he doubts and is uncertain, he has hope. Hope that somehow, even when he couldn't see an ending, even though he can't understand, that somehow Jesus would be with them. And and Jesus did bring healing to the boy that day. But Jesus also brought healing to the father, assuring him that his desperation, his longings, his doubts did not separate him from God's power and presence. All of us have likely experienced doubt in our life. There are situations like this father's desperation to help his son, or times of immense grief when someone we love died too soon, or when prayers, faithful and earnest prayers, seem to go unanswered. And we look to the heavens, we see the beautiful and countless stars in the sky, and we feel small. We might question everything we've ever been taught or believe about God in these moments and wonder how we might ever believe with certainty. 
Or perhaps you've known doubt when you look to scripture and you can't connect what you know and believe about the world to align with the words you read or practices that the churches hold. You might have had doubt when you tried to make sense of why scripture explains creation in seven days and science tells us another way, millions or billions of years of evolution. Or perhaps you've been told that you don't belong that because you're a woman, you shouldn't preach, or because you're gay, that somehow, even though God has created you and called you one of God's own, made in God's image, that somehow the church has still wrongly rejected you. Or maybe you, too, have been ill, physically or mentally or chronically, and words in scripture that tell you to just have faith seem to fall flat. Or perhaps you've simply become disillusioned because the words and actions of those who follow Christ don't seem to align with the words and actions of Christ. And through it all, you begin to doubt. There are countless reasons for us to experience doubt. And unfortunately, many of us have been made to feel that our doubts are a sign of weakness or lack of faith. But in this story from Mark, we hear Jesus suggesting another way an invitation to believe with our doubts, to know that doubt is a sign of hope, of searching, and of longing for Christ. And all of us in times of doubt are invited to pray as this father did, I believe, help my unbelief. Because doubt is not a contradiction of faith. Doubt is not the opposite of faith. Instead, doubt is a sign of the spirit within us, encouraging us to search to wonder, to hope for what might be. Doubt, in its most honest form, guides us to a deeper faith. It leads us to say, I don't know all the answers, or maybe even any at all, but I still believe. I still hope. If you feel doubt, you are not alone. It can be a lonely experience to be searching for answers, but the experience of doubt is common. Last year, Church of the Resurrection, which is a United Methodist congregation here in the United States, did a large survey on doubt, receiving answers from more than a thousand people. These were people who were both faithful church attendees and some who never attended church. People who were of any gender, any age, many lived experiences. And what they found is that 95% of people who responded have experienced doubt at least occasionally, and 24%. A quarter of those who responded said they feel it often. Overwhelmingly, people experience doubt at some point in their lives. Doubt does not threaten faith, but is a crucial part of our growing in love of God and discovering new about our faith in Christ. Scripture, too, is filled with stories of doubt. Abraham and Sarah in the Old Testament, having been promised descendants to number the stars in the sky, had doubt. Their doubt caused them to make decisions about their life and family that were outside of their initial plans, and still God was present to them and blessed them. Peter, the great disciple of Jesus, had doubt, lots and lots of doubt. In one instance, when Jesus called him to walk on water, Peter doubted, and it caused him to sink. In another instance, his doubt and fear caused him to deny his relationship with Jesus, Thomas, another beloved disciple, so famously doubted that we call him Doubting Thomas. But all of the disciples, those first followers who made their life with Jesus, who heard firsthand Jesus' words, who witnessed his miracles and his death, every single one of them doubted. Luke's gospel tells us that after the women had seen the empty tomb and had told the disciples about Jesus' resurrection— that the disciples responded in this way. It says, these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. Here's what I'm telling you. Doubt is biblical. Doubt is human. Richard Rohr, who's a beloved and respected theologian and Franciscan priest, wrote this. He said, before doubt, I thought faith was a matter of correct beliefs. My religious teachers taught me so. But doubt chipped away at those beliefs, one agonizing blow at a time, revealing that doubt need not be the death of faith. It can be, instead, the birth of a new kind of faith, 
a faith beyond belief, a faith that expresses itself in love, a deepening and expanding faith that can save your life and save the world. Our experience of doubt is not a sign of our weakness, but a sign of our faithful searching for God. It is one way that we experience growth in our commitment to Christ and can lead us into a deeper relationship. Doubt forces us to look at who we think God is, and when we faithfully search, we'll discover more about who God actually is and the power of God's love and grace. Doubt is a recognition that faith is not certain. And what I mean is that is that faith is a daily choice, an act of trusting God, even when we don't have all the answers. Doubt helps us see that faith is a gift. Choosing to love God and follow Christ is a practice of trust in this way. In times of distress or deconstruction or uncertainty, doubt can save our faith. It reminds us that God is with us, forgiving and redeeming us, not because we are strong or perfect, but because we are loved. Because even with all the distractions and disturbances of life around us, we choose to trust. Or as the Father in our Gospel reading today said, I believe, help my unbelief. Now, over the next several weeks, we're going to be looking at common questions about that that cause us doubt. Things like, how do we make sense of the Bible? Or, is heaven real? Or, why do innocent people suffer? And, And why do our prayers go unanswered? Together, I hope that over these next few weeks, our wrestling with doubt will lead us to a deeper faith and an understanding that doubt is not in opposition to faith, but is a faithful part of it. But today, I want to leave you with three suggestions for what to do when you wrestle with doubt. A roadmap, if you will. The first, stay with community. Remember back to that story from the Gospel of Mark that I shared with you of that desperate father. Even in his doubts and helplessness, he found community. He left his home, he found Jesus, and he earnestly pled with Christ for help unashamed in revealing his worries and fears and doubts. In spite of his skepticism, he trusted that Jesus and the crowds would offer support and prayer and encouragement. Community can carry us. Community can believe for us when we doubt. And if you, like this father, are struggling with faith, stick with community. There is room in this church, in our church, for doubters and skeptics. Let us believe for you until you can believe again for yourself. Number two, continue to be faithful. In every account of the resurrection, doubt and disbelief are part of the story. For good reason, I suppose, because it's not really within our normal comprehension to believe that the dead rise. Instead, belief in the resurrection is always an act of trust and hope in God's promises. But in every account, The women and the disciples accompany their doubt and fear with faith. The women left the tomb to tell others. The men ran to the tomb to meet Jesus, and all of them told the story over and over again. Even with their doubts and skepticisms, they continued to follow Jesus. They continued to practice their faith, even when they were uncertain. They relied and remembered Jesus' words. And so when you doubt, continue to be faithful. Keep praying, keep seeking God, keep hope that Christ is with you. And lastly, continue to worship. When we struggle with faith, we need worship more than ever. Even when songs and prayers get stuck in our throat, we need to worship God and wrap ourselves in God's comfort and guidance. Worship is a space, one of many, where God can break through to bring us comfort and encouragement and nourish us for the journey ahead. At the end of Matthew's gospel, just after the resurrection, and still in the middle of the confusion and doubts, we're told this, when they, the disciples, saw Jesus, they worshipped him, and some doubted. Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. It was in community 
by their faithfulness and in worship that Jesus confronted their doubts by blessing them and sending them into the world. Jesus greets our doubt with blessing and assures us of his presence. It's as if Jesus were saying to them, I am with you in good times and bad. I am with you when your faith is certain and when you doubt. I am with you in every time and circumstance. Today, some of you are wrestling with doubt. And if so, I want to encourage you to follow in the footsteps of those who have walked this road before you. The road of doubt is well-worn and you will find a path. Stay with the community of faith. Continue to be faithful to Christ and continue in worship. Look for ways that God is being revealed among you. And as you do, I believe, I trust that Christ will come to you. Jesus will say to you, as he has said to many others before, I am with you, even to the end of the age. Let us pray. Holy God, you call us to be people of faith, yet we are often people with doubts too. Help us in our unbelief. Remind us that our doubts are an act of faith. Comfort and heal us and help us to trust in you. Assure us that you bless our doubts and invite us to be our full and true selves. Give us courage to be honest and to confront our doubts, knowing that as we do, we will find you. We ask this in the name of your Son. Amen. Please stay with me now, friends, as we continue in worship and hear a song from our worship band. There's been a pole and a rain coming down all around me lately.
Thank you for joining us for Church on the Go. If you'd like to know more about Messiah Church, you can find us online at messiahchurch.org or on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook using the handle at messiahchurchmn. Next week, we've got a message called Wrestling with the Bible, where we look at how the Bible is beautiful and comforting and life-giving. You know, it prepares us to love as God loves, but at times, it can cause us to ask questions, to dig deeper, and to recognize the humanity of the people who wrote it. I hope you'll join us again next week and throughout this whole sermon series through January and into February. This series may be a great opportunity to invite someone to join you in listening and reflecting on scripture and these messages and music together. If you liked this episode or any of the Church on the Go episodes, feel free to share with your family and friends.